Mastering your music or beats professionally is essential to achieving that polished sound. Let's dive into the process. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I make in-depth production tutorials for every stage, whether you're a beginner or professional. You're sure to find something useful in my videos, so make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss when I publish a video and at the same time, you'll be helping me with the YouTube algorithm. Now if you love to be a part of my community where you can meet other producers and get secret production tips and tricks, make sure you check out my Discord, I'll leave the link in the description. In this tutorial, I'll be using third-party plugins, but you can follow with any plugin because it's a universal process. But if you want my plugins, I have my share license that has all the plugins I'm gonna use in this tutorial and you can just get it for $10. You don't want to miss this offer. The zip folder contains the following plugins, the Fab Filter bundle, the Isotope Ozone 10 bundle and the IK Multimedia T-Rex bundle and also the Sound Toys Ultimate FX bundle and it comes for both Windows and Mac. I'll leave the link in the description so check it out. There are several mastering techniques and chains out there and I'm sure you have tried quite a handful of them. I am no exception, but I found a solution to that. The problem is we just follow other producers without analyzing the situation and asking a very important question. Do I need this or what does this do? You gotta know the basic mastering chain that is universal and essential. After that, you can be experimental with other processes like dynamics, stereo imaging, and all those processes to add that sonics to your master. Even though mastering is just making your tracks match to standard levels, there are three important steps in the mixing stage that is needed in order to achieve maximum loudness without distortion or clipping and that is gain staging, limiting and mono mixing. You need basic knowledge on these three in order to achieve a professional sounding master. Now I'm not gonna dive into gain staging because it's a pretty diverse topic but have no worries I have made an in-depth video about gain staging. You can click right here to assess it or check the description I also leave a link there. But basically gain staging is a process of making sure the audio is set to an optimal level for the next processor in the chain in order to minimize noise and distortion. Limiting is used to increase perceived loudness by increasing the quietest parts of an audio signal while preventing the peaks from clipping. Producers tend to mistake the limiter as the final process in the mastering chain, but it's equally important in the mixing stage. Let me show you an example. Say we're mixing a hi-hat. And we have it at a nice level that we're comfortable with. But when we check the meter, we see that it's still peaking at a higher level than it sounds. Now, if we leave it that way, when we start to master and we are pushing our final limiter, it will distort quickly without us actually pushing the limiter that much. I'm going to be using the T-Rex Classic Clipper to do this. Now, limiting and adding back our gain makes sure that it never passes a certain level. And in return, we can add some harmonics to your sound. And that is because loudness is perceived and not in the numbers. Now we see that the limiting we have introduced will give us a lot of headroom without losing the loudness. Let's talk about the magic which is mixing in solo. Now this isn't any plugin or any special technique. You just have to change your master channel from stereo to mono. Now what does this does is that you listen instead in stereo which is two channels to one channel. While this helps you achieve mono compatibility, it also gives you the chance to have space in your mix with very little effort because you get the chance to hear what elements in your mix are loud or masking other sound thus allowing you to have a clean and not muddy mix that will later make your mastering a mess now i'm gonna show you my mastering chain and the techniques i use just like i said i'm going to be using third party plugins and you can grab them for a very small price this is a beat i made just for this tutorial i'll let you listen to it before the master
I'm gonna go ahead and loop the loudest parts so that we can master correctly. All right. Now the first thing I'm going to add is the Fab Filter Pro C2 Compressor. And what I'm going to do here is tame sharp peaks so that we can push our limiter a little bit more while avoiding distortion. We are going to use a fast attack and release settings. You want to just have 2 dB of gain reduction here without adding back the gain. Now we're going to add a second compressor and we're going to create space by setting fast attack and a medium release. This makes your sound more fuller because we tame the peaks using the first compressor. We need to add some movement or dynamics to our track. Now it's time to EQ and that's why I want to bring your attention to the Fab Filter Pro EQ. The reason I chose this EQ is because it has professional and advanced settings and it has a linear phase setting and the linear phase EQ is an EQ that does not alter the phase of the source sound. Secondly, the Fab Filter EQ can cut or boost in mid side left or right. We're going to take advantage of the mid side property to cut the lows to 20 hertz. These are the frequencies that we can even listen to, but electronically they can still mess up your sound systems. And the mid side EQ takes this one step further. It keeps the sound at the center while cutting the lows. Now to cut the extreme highs to at least 16 kilohertz. Now using the Ozone 10 Maximizer, I'm going to push the master to attain good loudness level. I'm going to set the ceiling at 0.1 dB to protect sound systems. Now I'll push the limiter until I start getting some compression. Now I'll stop here to monitor the loudness level. We are going to be using the T-Rex metering. Now regarding the loudness wall, the minus 14 LFS streaming levels isn't where your loudness must be. It is just the level that streaming services will play your songs when you upload to them. So don't be afraid to take your songs to at least minus 8 LFS. I mean we have producers like Skrillex going for minus 6 LFS without distortion. And with the techniques I show you in this video, especially at the mixing stage, you can achieve these insane levels with no to little effort. Now I'm going to aim for minus 10 to minus 8 LFS.
great now we can see we're at minus 7.8 and we have no clipping this is a very controversial topic but one thing i'm going to say is if it sounds good then why not the only thing i recommend is if you're mastering beats for selling then you probably don't need this but if you're releasing a song or an instrumental you'll want to consider using a reverb because it glues and gives a lush feel to your track if used correctly now you want to put a reverb before the limiter and make sure you only apply a little to maximize using this effect you'll like to remove any reverb on your drums if there are any to avoid a muddy sound So there you have it, a step-by-step in-depth mastering tutorial. Hope you learned a lot and enjoyed. Let me know how you guys master your tracks in the comments and let me know what you think about my process. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like and turn on the notification bell in that way you're helping my channel grow and other people who are interested in this video to see it more easily.